chasing shadows You gave the world a light to follow
faith. Faith is more than just believing. It's knowing. While many of us are strong in our faith, others struggle. a little more patience. What if everyone would just listen a little bit more? How much better would this world be? Faith lives. Faith loves. Faith grows. Faith counts. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our youth service, where we're looking at faith, what it is, and why God cares about it. Next week, our service is on Why God Cares About Disability, with our guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Damien Palmer, speaking to us. Join me in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of worship, for the freedom we have to meet together, although not in person, but online. Thank you for the technology that enables us to do so. Thank you that we can bring to you all the hurts and fears that trouble us and leave them with you, knowing that your strength and assurance are all that we require. Lord, we bring before you the COVID situation troubling Australia right now. We pray for the lockdown as people are separated from their family and friends. We pray that you show them your love and grant them comfort and peace during this time. We pray for our youth and children in particular studying from home. Lord, we know how difficult it is. We pray that you are with them, helping them and keeping them motivated. We also pray for their parents looking after and helping them from home. We pray for the Year 12 HSC students who have been learning from home while studying for trials in the HSC coming up soon. We pray during these unpredictable times that they may find rest in you. We pray for the students who may be getting the vaccine to help them, that you ease their worry. We also pray for Joe as she delivers this morning sermon, that you fill her with the words to say and open the hearts of all who hear. Amen. State Youth Camp is one of those times where young people get to experience Jesus. What I celebrate for State Youth Camp is the way that our churches can serve and learn from one another. Here is a beautiful expression of what it means to be a part of something so much bigger than just one local church.
I'm excited to hear what God has to say um, through me and through Scotty. Um, and I'm really excited to hear um, what God does in the lives of the young people um, who are at camp. I'm excited to unpack and explore the topic um, that challenges us that we are to follow Jesus with all of our life and what it looks like to follow him all life long. And I'm using the word all a lot there, but I'm really excited for that too. Really cool. camp is coming up for our youth in September. Unlike previous years, we're unable to camp at Appen because of the COVID restrictions. However, depending on what the lockdown restrictions are going to be, camp is still going to go ahead. Whether that means our youth can come together like they did last year at the church, or are able to join via the live stream in their own houses to connect in with the youth from all over New South Wales and the ACT. So camp is still going ahead for our young people. It may look different, but that doesn't mean that God's work isn't going to happen. So can I encourage you, church, to continue to pray for our youth during this time. And join with me now as we pray for camp. Father God, Lord, I thank you for State Youth Camp. Lord, that it is such a great ministry that our young people and our youth are able to join in to you. Lord, because of the different COVID restrictions, camp is going to look different. But Lord, I pray that the young people of Ing Impact at Ingleburn Baptist Church and the young people from all across New South Wales and the ACT are able to connect, are able to hear your word proclaimed, and Lord, that they can see that you gave their all for them and that they can give their all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 3 and verse 6. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance by what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 13 and 16. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. A Hall of Fame is a place that honors people that are exceptional at what they do. It exists to remind future generations of the greatness of these people from the past. Did you know that God has a Hall of Fame to remember the extraordinary people of faith who were written about in the Old Testament? And we can find that Hall of Fame in the New Testament of the Bible. Hebrews 11 tells us that faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. This faith is what gave people in the old days great fame. This faith is what puts them in God's Hall of Fame. By faith, Abel gave his best to God. By faith, Enoch walked with God and was a friend of God. By faith, Noah listened to God, obeyed God, trusted God, and did what's right. It was by faith that Abraham followed God and that even Sarah, Abraham's wife, believed that God would keep his promise. 
It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. And by faith, Jacob blessed his sons and worshiped God. By faith, Joseph believed that God would guide him and see him through every troubled time. By faith, Moses looked forward to the great reward that God had in store for him and led the people of Israel out of captivity. It was by faith that Rahab was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God. And it was by faith that Joshua led the people of Israel. All of these people became famous for their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God has planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So since God has given us His Hall of Fame of people who have gone before us and had great faith despite hard times, let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who makes our faith perfect, so that one day God may say, well done, good and faithful servant, and we may be initiated into His great Hall of Fame. loved the Olympics this year. I mean, who like me watch hours and hours of the Olympics from the swimming, the diving, the football, the basketball, the track and field. I mean, the support of all our Aussie athletes and the athletes from all across the world who went to Tokyo to be called Olympic champion and to win that gold medal. There were so many amazing Australian sporting achievements from our Aussies this year. So many amazing athletes that will forever go down in the Australian Sporting Hall of Fame. To begin with, we had Emma McKeon, who won four gold medals and three bronze medals at the Olympics. She then became the most decorated Olympian at Tokyo and is tied first for winning the most medals in a single Olympics by a female. Jess Fox won gold in the canoe slalom. Melissa Wu, after competing in four Olympics, was able to dive herself to her first individual bronze medal. We watched runners such as Peter Boll and Rowan Browning, the flying mullet, make history on the track and field, as well as Ash Maloney and Cedric Dubla celebrating in the triumph of the men's decathlon. Our basketball team came third. Harry Garside did the first thing that a boxer has ever done at the Olympics for an Australian in the last 33 years, winning a medal. And Artichoke de Sola and Clancy, after a drought, since Sydney 2000, won silver in the beach volleyball. From our swimming team to our sailing to our equestrian and all the other sporting events in between. There are so many Aussies who will go down forever in the Australian Sporting Hall of Fame. Well, as we saw, God has his own Hall of Fame. God's Hall of Fame is full of people who are faithful to Him. That we saw in Hebrews 11, Abel had a faithful sacrifice. Enoch faithfully walked with God. Noah faithfully built the ark. Abraham faithfully followed God as he led. And Sarah's faith meant that she came to believe the impossible, that she was going to become pregnant and have a baby at such an old age. From Daniel to David, to Isaac, to Moses, to Elisha and Elisha and Zechariah and all that we read about in Hebrews 11. These were God's faithful people to him. And we can read about their stories all throughout the Old Testament. But the question is, what is faith? 
And why are these people what God calls faithful? Well, if we read in Hebrews 11, starting from verse 1, it says this. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Faith is trust, confidence, and assurance in God, believing that God exists and believing in all that he has done from you. He created you, he loves you, and he sent his son Jesus into this world to save you. So people who are faithful to God have faith in him and everything they don't see, even if they don't see him. For believers in God live by faith and not by sight. Throughout history, the people who believe in God, all those people in the Bible and people who believe in God throughout history are faithful because they have hope, confidence and assurance in who God is. They believe in him and trust in him completely. At the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, Australia got to witness and to hear from another of God's faithful people. Australian high jumper Nicola McDermott won the silver medal as she shattered the Australian record in the process during the Tokyo Olympic high jump final. In a captivating performance, McDermott became the first Australian woman to clear two metres at the Olympics before going on to clear 2.02 metres shortly after. The bar got raised to 2.04 metres And after clipping the bar, Nicola lost to Russian Olympic Committee member Mariah Listakini, who won gold. And Nicola McDermott took silver. But as what Nicola said in her interview with Channel 7, once she won silver, that truly highlights her faith and assurance in God. Let's take a listen. And I just want to say thank you to Australia for, for being on this journey with me to gold. This silver's like gold for me today. Um, and, you know, my hope is that the stadiums will be filled again yeah. <laughs> um, in a post-COVID world, but um, maybe not even just for athletics performances, but that we'll see revivals again in the stadiums and that people would hear a message of faith and a gospel and really inspire like they did in Billy Graham decades ago. And, Um, That's my dream from a medal. I'm definitely still jumping in Paris. I'm going after that gold, but um, I'm going to keep putting my 100% in because if this is just like a little bit of encouragement for one person watching that anything is possible when you have faith, then I've done my job today. Oh, you have done your job. Uh, There's so many questions I want to ask you. I'll start with your faith. When did this become such a significant part of your life? I think as a teenager, um, you know, I was I was always an outcast, and I got welcomed in um, to a faith community that loved me. And I just remember encountering God's love, and it changed the way that I thought of myself as a misfit, and like, you know, why am I created so tall and stuff? And it gave me passion and purpose to use it. Um, and I, I think in, in 2017 was my big moment where it, it flicked a switch and I just decided to pursue God over sport and whatever comes with sport is a bonus but I'm already complete and perfect in love regardless of it and that's just allowed me to soar over every high jump bar and not be um, not be scared anymore because I'm loved and that's the most important thing. Do you have faith in God the creator of all things? Like Nicola like all of those who are mentioned in the Bible to be faithful, like all the people that you know who believe God to be the one true God. 
Do you have this hope and assurance about what you do not see? I told you, I watched a lot of Olympics over the last few weeks, but there isn't a sport that I watched more than the artistic gymnastics. I mean, I watched it so much that I was even able to get Daniel invested in it. Well, at least a little bit. But you know, what I think to be the most incredible thing about the artistic gymnastics is just how skilled the gymnasts are. Able to do so many tumbles and tricks that somehow seem so impossible, but then it's so amazing when they're able to pull them off. Do you watch the gymnastics? Are you a fan like me? What about the balance beam? Many call the beam to be the most difficult apparatus for female gymnasts because it requires the highest level of skill, incorporating grace and power, control, rhythm, flexibility, and all importantly, mental focus. I mean, having to flip and jump on a 10 centimeter board, a 10 centimeter wide beam is just amazing. But what's even more incredible is that a lot of the tricks that the female gymnasts do involve the gymnasts losing sight of the beam while they're doing them. Just think about that for a second. It's hard enough to try and jump and balance on the 10 centimeter wide beam, but then the gymnasts flip around in circles without being able to see where the beam is when they're trying to land. The women have to have faith in their training, faith in their ability, and have faith in trusting they know where the beam is to successfully land back on it. That's kind of what it means to have faith in what we can't see. Just as these female gymnasts on the beam apparatus have faith and confidence to land back on the beam, even though they can't see it while they're flipping. Having faith in God means having hope and assurance in God and everything he has done, even though we can't see him or we didn't see him in person and what God did for us 2,000 years ago. Is your faith in God strong and confident, immovable and assured? Do you have faith in what you can't see? Well, our youth group this term, while we've been joining together on Zoom online, we've been looking at what it means to have belief and faith in God from the book of John. And at the end of each study, we ask two um, variations of these questions. The first question is, how would you describe your faith in God right now? How would you describe your faith? And there are a few options. The first being, I believe in Jesus, have faith in God and trust in him with my life. The second, I'm not sure where I stand with God. Thirdly, my life is too busy for God right now. And finally, my life is moving in a direction away from God. And then the second question we ask are what are the barriers that you or people you know have in believing and having faith in God? What is stopping you or people you know having faith in God? When's the last time you asked yourself these questions and reflected on your faith in God? I mean, there's been so much going on over the last few weeks, last few months, last few years. And if you were to take stock of your life right now, to take stock of your faith and your relationship with God right now, how would you describe it? What does it look like? Is your faith firm and secure? Or 
Or is your faith dwindling? Because you're experiencing times of heartache? Or because things are rough right now? Or even does your faith come and go? It's easy for you to have faith sometimes, but other times you can't have faith in God at all. Or is your faith in God non-existent? You don't have that faith. There are so many things that we can experience. So many things in this life that will bring us great ups and bring us great downs. But in all of those waves, is your faith in God immovable, strong and unwavering, no matter the circumstances life throws at you? Just like our faithful heroes in the Bible. Do you have faith in God in a future you don't know or feel like you can't see? Do you have confidence in who God is, what God has done and what he will continue to do? So the question is, how do you have faith in all circumstances? Well, just like our Olympians who put on their protective equipment to play their sports, such as our swimmers with their swimming caps and goggles, our footballers with their boots and shin pads and our cyclists with their helmets. There is equipment that God gives us, special armour God gives us to help us stand firm in our faith. And we read this in Ephesians chapter 6, starting from verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the special forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. For this armour, God gives us the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet with the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. And in verse 16, we read, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. your faith in God can become immovable. Take up the shield of faith so you can be strong and unwavering no matter what circumstances life throws at you. Even though there are many other protective equipment pieces in the armour of God, the shield is one that goes before you, protecting you when an attack is coming. Satan's attacks are like fiery arrows but having the shield of faith means having faith that God will stand against anything hurled your way. Negativity and lies will come into your life, but those fiery arrows will be stopped in their tracks when they are blocked by this shield. So in a similar way, when we take up the shield of faith, we're guarding our spirits by upholding our faith in God. Even when people and circumstance us, stances, tempt us to pull us away from God. As long as you're upholding your faith as a shield, when you struggle with sin 
or just don't know the answer to a question. You'll be able to deflect the doubts and fears that would otherwise shatter your belief, that would otherwise lead you to doubting your faith or even feeling like God isn't important in your life. Wearing the full armour of God and taking up the shield of faith will cover your doubts and struggles. The more faith we have in our Lord, the less likely we'll be hurt when Satan attacks. Because when we are faithful, it means we completely trust that God will protect us. God will never leave us. And when we take up the shield of faith, we don't do it through our own strength, but through God's strength. So have faith in God. Be like the faithful Hall of Famers and the faithful followers of Jesus that you know. Let God guide you and protect you. Trust in Him and trust in what you can't see. Put on the armour of God. Hold the shield of faith to combat the arrows of the devil. Stand firm. Have immovable faith, assurance and confidence in God. Who He is, what He has done and what God will continue to do. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I just thank you for who you are. Lord, that you love us. Lord, that you protect us. Lord, that you are with us. Lord, I thank you for the examples of faith that you have given us in the Bible. And Lord, the examples of faith in you that we can see throughout history. Lord, I pray that you give each and every one of us this assurance, this confidence in who you are, even though we may not see everything. Lord, I pray that you grow our faith. Lord, that it become immovable. Lord, no matter what circumstances life may bring us, Lord, even in this time, God, I pray that we take up your armour. Lord, that with you we can combat the evil of this world. So, Lord, I pray for all of these things in your mighty name. Amen. When you go, I'll go. When you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow All your ways are good All your ways are sure I will trust in you alone Higher than my side High above my life I will trust in you
I'll go When you stay, I'll stay When you move, I'll move I will follow you Who you love, I'll love How you serve, I'll serve If this life I lose, I will follow When you go, I'll go When you stay, I'll stay When you move, I'll move We have come to the end of our service this morning. Thank you all for watching. We hope that you have been impacted by the sermon and gained a greater insight into what faith is and why God cares about it. Let me leave you with this word from Psalms. By trust in your unfailing love, my heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. See you next week. There's no fear in love and no doubt.